So it's the time of year where people's Christmas, end of year book hauls are starting to come out. But I want to know, what were people hauling last year? <laughs> I'm like Scooby and Shaggy. I'm solving a mystery. So if you remember a while ago, I started a series called Booktube Rewind on my channel where I read what people had read a year prior. This time, we're not doing what people have read. We're going to do what people bought last Christmas. I love Christmas. I love Christmas book hauls. And I think it's always really fun to see what people get for Christmas. What? people in their lives get them or subscribers get them. I think it's always really interesting to see the kind of books that people want to buy for others. What makes people gift a certain book? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and watch like 20, 30 booktubers Christmas book hauls from last year and whatever the most popular books are, I'm going to read them in this reading vlog. I have no idea how this is going to go. I'm quite nervous. <laughs> But my guess is that it's going to be new releases that were kind of coming out towards the end of last year. But also we've seen this year especially, that kind of can mean nothing. Like look at The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Look at so many books that have had so much success on TikTok. Or Booktube has a sudden wave for a book and everyone starts reading it because a few big booktubers have been reading it. That can happen. So actually it could be anything. I don't really know what we're in for. But let's cut to Megan finding out what we're going to be reading in this reading vlog. I think... When I did the last booktube rewind, where it was people's wrap ups, I think I watched about 40, but Christmas book hauls are gonna be bigger, I assume, than people's wrap ups. So I'm thinking somewhere between 20 or 30 will probably give us our answer because that was a lot last time. <laughs> I've been working on this for five weeks. That was a lot. Also, I hand wrote everything, like all the lists, all the books. I'm doing it on a spreadsheet this time. It was it was too much for my hand. But I thought we would start together by watching my Christmas book haul from last year and seeing how many of them I have read. And, you know, some of these may possibly be in this video if other people hauled them. I'm not going to, like, talk about them in depth because otherwise this video will be, like, 20 years long. This is essentially a video in itself, this idea. But I'm literally just going to say if I've read it or if I haven't read it. I don't, I don't think I've read a lot of these. My books from last Christmas. I got a lot of great books for Christmas and birthday last year and they're very close together for me. And I feel like I actually have not read a ton of them. My goal would be half. I don't think I'm actually going to count. Well, I'll put a counter up here, but I haven't got anything to write this down. So we're just gonna watch it and then we'll go and watch other people's book hauls. But I was looking like on, on YouTube, like Mel's, Mel's Christmas book haul is an hour long. Why are you doing that to me? How many books are you holding anyway? They put me through purgatory. Yeah. Mm. They put me through hell on this earth. So I feel like because they're longer, we won't have to watch as many. 20 to 30 will probably give us a good representation. So, ooh. So first is oh, Mexican haven't read Gothic. that. Have not read Mexican Gothic. Want to. It's been a video idea for a year, but I don't have any other books for the video idea. So that video my idea may get scrapped and I may just read <laughs> another book. Ooh, okay. So next we've got The King of Crows by Libba Bray. Haven't read it. <laughs> I will be reading that in January, so I will not be reading it for this video. I've already got a planned video for it. I was supposed to read it this month, but I didn't get around to it. Next is The Gilded Wolves oh by my God. Roshani Haven't Trotsky. read it. Have not read Gilded Wolves. Oh my God, we're not off to a very good start. <laughs> this is The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. I Oh, our first one. I've read The Mystery of the Blue Train. First one that I've read. Didn't love it, but I have read it. <laughs> We've got Hunting Prince Dracula. I've read it! I've read Hunting Prince Dracula. Go me. So this is Disfigured on Fairy. I have not read Disfigured. Really want to. It's probably like the non-fiction book I want to read the most, but I haven't read a lot of non-fiction this year. It's a book I would really like to vlog reading it, but again, I've just struggled to fit it into a video. It's the Strange Case of the Alchemist. Okay, I have read Strange Case Mystery and of the Mystery. 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 I've read both of them. This is When the Tiger Came Down oh, the Mountain. Oh, I have read When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. I read that like, that was the first book I read in 2021. So I read that very quickly after getting it. Forgotten Women, the Rise. By Jing Shu. Oh, I have not read Forgotten Room the Rioters. I would love to, but I don't think anyone else is gonna haul this book, so we're not gonna be reading it in this video. So got me The Only Good Indians by Ooh, Stephen Graham Jones. Yes, Bones. I've read that. Woohoo! The Year of the Witching by Alex Henderson. Oh, I have read The Year of the Witching, another one I read early this year. Very early this year. First, we've got King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I have not read that. I have not read King of Scars. I do want to start that duology. Come Tumbling Down by Shaun Oh, Maguire. I have read Come Tumbling this Down. This the Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker, but I have not read Over the Woodward Wall yet, which is, it's so short. Look at it. It's tiny. Why have I not read that? 
It's embarrassing. I've, I've read, read The Hand on the, on the Wall by Maureen read Johnson. That. In the Themis Files by... Have not read... Have not read either of the next books in the way in the whatever it's called Themis Files. This have is not read the Cat Rice novel. novel. The Deep by River have Solomon. Have not read the Deep. <gasps> Oh my god, again. A short one I own. I own the audiobook and the physical of this. I hate myself, okay? <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. This is Supernova by I have Marissa read Supernova, Mayer. yes. That, I wanted to finish that series, so I'm glad I finished it. Didn't like it though, didn't like Supernova. It is The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ankrum. I've so read The Weight of the Stars. The ah! by okay, Ankrim, good. I have Jim not read Crow The New Jim Crow by yet. Michelle Non-fiction of me, I haven't read a lot this year, but that's okay. But this is The Thursday Murder Club. Oh, I have read The Thursday Murder Club. Yes, I've read that one. Um, I loved that. One of my favorite books I've read this year. Very excited to read the next one, hopefully soon. Okay, so that's, that is all the books I got for Christmas last year. I feel like I've read half. I've at least read 10, I would say. Well, you'll know more than me. Of the ones that I haven't read, the ones I feel like are most likely to come up, hmm, maybe King of Scars, that's like quite a popular book. Maybe Mexican Gothic might come up, but I feel like a lot of them are quite niche. So we're gonna see, I don't know if any of these will actually be anything we read in this video. But now I'm gonna go start <laughs> watching loads of other Christmas book hauls and I'll come back to you once we've got our first double up. So our first book that two people have read essentially. So I have watched six Christmas book hauls so far. It's taken me about an hour. <laughs> and we're finally getting duplicates. Up until the last one I watched, we hadn't had any duplicates. And I was like, I was ready to throw myself out the window. I thought we weren't gonna get any. <laughs> well, that's a lie, actually, I tell a lie. We'd gotten lots of duplicates for books that I had already read. So far, I've watched my book haul, Mel's, Ashley's, Jodie's, Mina's, and then just I just watched Maya from Ocean Reads one. And Mel had hauled Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. And after researching it and seeing that she just grabs tales and puts it in like a gothic ambiance and then twists it in a way to fit her own story, I just was really intrigued by that. And yeah, she'd hauled the only good Indians. Seamlessly blending classic horror and a dramatic narrative with sharp social commentary. Mel was hauling a lot of the ones I'd already read, but with Maya, Maya has pulled through and uh, we started getting duplicates. So we have got one I'm very excited for and actually hope continues into the top echelons <laughs> of what we're gonna read in this video. These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Mel and Maya have hauled These Violent Delights. It is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in the 1920s. And it's supposed to be a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. It follows these two types of gangs, I think. Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters, Ashley and Maya have hauled. So we have Days of Blood and Starlight, which is book two, and also Dreams of Gods and Monsters, which that cover, that cover is beautiful. First of all, I got the box set for Daughter of Smoke and Bone. And Mina and Maya have hauled Red Rising. And this is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. It is the Red Rising trilogy. I've heard nothing but good reviews about this. Which I didn't, I didn't predict being on this list. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be reading that and I'm a bit intimidated by it. I just wasn't <laughs> expecting that. But I'm up for it if it ends up being in the final selection. So I'm gonna go watch maybe like six or seven more and then check in with you again. Okay, so <laughs> we're up to 13 videos watched. I have watched 13 Christmas book hauls from last year and <laughs> We now have 22 books that two people hold. Two different people hold, two different book tubers hold, but we have none that three people have hold. <laughs> Me to all the booktubers because they haven't hauled the same books. 
You've ruined it. <laughs> Laugh all you want. There's going to be a lot of people out there tonight that can't eat. Which is what we need. We need for this, for a book to be featured in this video, we need at least three booktubers to have hauled it in their Christmas book haul. So that's what we're going to work towards. Going forward, I'm going to do at least 21 videos. So we're going to do at least eight more. <laughs> This is taking me so much longer than the last episode did because book hauls are so much bigger than wrap ups, particularly Christmas book hauls, like so many more books mentioned. But none of you are fucking all in the same books. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna do at least 21, but if there is not three books that have at least three people having read them, we will continue until we do have that, essentially. Some notable ones that we have had and since I last spoke to you, if you remember, I hauled Mexican Gothic. Nicole from Bon Bon Books, I think, it also has read that. I've been hearing so much about this book on Bookstagram, Booktube, and Booktalk. Fucking Becca and Mel can fuck right off because they have both hauled all the Sarah J Mass new covers, like A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Frost and whatever. I don't know, fucking care, I don't wanna read them. I bought myself the first and the second book because I just had to have them physically. One of you got me the last two books that I needed in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. A Court of Thorns and Roses, Rowan, what? A Court of Thorns and Roses? Oh my God. So it's A Court of Wings and Ruin and A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. I don't want to do that. Sarah J Maas is, is not a can of worms I'm willing to open yet. Ray Bearer is one I'd be very happy to read. Mina and Hayley from Hayley and Bookland hauled that. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this YA fantasy series. And I have heard some amazing reviews for it. Black Sun, another one. Um, Kayla from Books and Lala. Oh, Mel hauled that as well. So I can't, I can't completely be mad at Mel. <laughs> So many of my friends have been reading this recently and talking about it nonstop. This cover though, the cover of this book is just the foiling. Look at that. Ooh, when the light hits. Mm. And then surprisingly, one I was not expecting, Wuthering Heights. I actually think I'd be up for it. Hayley from Hayley and Bookland again hauled that and Reagan from Ray Ray Reads hauled that. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I've always wanted to read a couple classics and this is one of the ones on the list. You guys know I love romance. So there's some like notable mentions of what we have so far. I'm hoping, I really love Mexican Gothic to be up there. Ray Bear or Black Sun are other ones I would like to be up there. So we're just gonna do at least eight more. Hopefully in that three books will win supremacy. Okay, I have done all that I can. <laughs> I can't take any more. I have watched 21 Christmas book hauls from last year. And from this, we have our TBR, which is very exciting. Out of all of the TBRs, there was one book that appeared on four TBRs. So this was the first book I knew I was gonna be reading and it is The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. So the people that hauled this were Maya from Ocean Reads, Kayla from Books and Lala, Brooks Books, and Maddie from Book Browsing Blog. This is about a sorority of witches. Magical witch stuff. This is the Illumicrate copy um, and it's beautiful. But I'm definitely intrigued to give it a go because I can kind of vibe with Dark Academia sorority and witches. That sounds kind of fun. This is on here predominantly because it was in the December Illumicrate box. That's why I have it. So that's why it's made it onto this list. People who, you know, receive Illumicrate or buy Illumicrate hauled it, but I think there was only three of them. Kayla, as far as I know, doesn't and bought it. So that's why it ended up being four. Now, then I did something rogue, right? <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. No, I'm not allowed. I know I'm not allowed. We had a lot of books tied on three people having read them, a lot. We'll get into that in a second. But I noticed a trend, right? I noticed a trend. This is something that four different booktubers hauled and there were eight copies of Called the Saga comic book graphic novel series, okay? So usually I wouldn't do this for series, right? There was eight different Saga volumes hauled, so a lot of different Saga volumes. That's why I've decided to include it because it was kind of abundant. I kept noticing it, but different volumes. I don't think volume one was actually hauled. We had Mel hauling volume three, Ashley from Product Proof Fiction hauling volume five and six, Jade from J.D. Ray Reads hauling volume eight and nine, and Maddie again hauling volumes four 
4, 5, and 6. The second volume ends in a cliffhanger, and I was so very desperate to get to this one. Saga, volume 6 and 7. This is probably my favourite graphic novel series. I stopped at volume 7 and never continued, and really, really want to. It's Saga, volume 4 and 5, and this follows two people from warring races where like their races completely hate each other and they are in love and have actually got married and had a child and so they are trying to flee because not only do their races hate each other both of their races then hate their relationship because they're considered traitors. So volume one was never hold. And usually I have not made this rule in other ones for novels where like multiple books and series have been hauled. I'm not counting them as one thing. But this was something that really surprised me. I wasn't expecting to see this on here. I didn't know it was so successful, um, so popular. And so I just thought, you know what, we should read this. It's something a bit different. It's something that I wouldn't have picked up if not for this video. And because it felt like I was constantly seeing different volumes of it I felt like we should give it a go and also it's a bit different than like a novel series because it doesn't take as long to read so people are going to get through it quicker I think the dynamics and like the context behind it is a bit different so I feel good about including it in this vlog and I'm excited to see what I think it's like a comic book style graphic novel oh I just realized I didn't give you synopsis of this have I given you that already I <laughs> can't remember the level of unprofessionalism far too much. This is a sorority um, of witches, basically. I think we have one new one who's entering the college, one who's been in it for a while, and something goes wrong and they have to kind of save their sisterhood, essentially, is what I know about this. All I know about this is that it's set in a fantasy world and it, we're following a young family, a new family with a baby. That's all I know, but I'm excited to get into it. And then, how many books did we have that had three people having hauled it? Hold up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We had eleven different books that people, that three people had hauled, right? I'm just gonna tell you them all quickly and then I'm gonna tell you which one I decided to end up including in this vlog. So we had The Cousins by Karen M. McManus, A Dark Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab, Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of God and Monsters by Lainey Taylor, Deal with the Elf King by Elise Cover. Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass, A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass, Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, and These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. So, <laughs> I immediately got rid of The Cousins by Karen Elkmanis because that was in the same Illumicrate box that The Ravens was in. I feel like that would be like an unfair bias <laughs> into Illumicrate basically picking what I read. Then I made the controversial decision to get rid of all of the e. Schwab books, all Lenny Taylor books, and all of the Sarah J Mass books. Because the purpose of this video, and this series in general, is to find out what was having a moment, like a moment in time a year ago. Like it was having a little surge, a little, a little moment in the sun. And I feel like those authors always have a moment in the sun. So I felt like that wasn't really in keeping in the concept and the kind of idea behind the series. I feel like it wouldn't be very exciting. So that leaves us with Deal With The Elf King, Black Sun, and These Violent Delights. And the one that I felt like was having a real moment back then, has continued to have a real moment. And I, the one that I really just felt like you guys would be most interested in seeing me read, and that's why I picked it, is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Again, another book to favorite. Another book to favorite. This book has been just blowing up. I know this is set in 1926 Shanghai. It is a Romeo and Juliet retelling where they are members of different like gangs, family gangs that exist within Shanghai. And this has just been so popular. So many people have loved this book and I'm really intrigued to see what I'm gonna think of it. A lot of you have wanted me to read this so it's finally happening. So that is our TBR for this video in what people were hauling last Christmas. I'm gonna start with the most popular one that was The Ravens. And yeah, I'll check back in with you when I've read a little bit of this. Let's leave the past behind. I am halfway through The Ravens and listen. I'm really enjoying it. Yes! <laughs> yes! I think this is one of like 
the kind of YA fantasy, it's, it's fantastical, it's got magic in it, books that I have enjoyed most in recent times, which I wasn't expecting from this. I really was not, I was kind of going into this <laughs> with like very low expectations, not because I thought the book was going to be bad, but just because I hadn't really heard anyone actually review it, I'd heard a lot of people buy it, but I'm actually really enjoying it. Like, it's a really good time, I think this is such a solid YA fantasy book. So, essentially, oh, also, hang on, hang on, hang on, the authors are Kaz Morgan and Danielle Page, right? I, for some reason, thought this was like a debut writing duo or something. No, Kaz Morgan wrote The 100 and Danielle Page wrote, um, is it Dorothy Must Die or something? So, like, these are two super successful authors, right? We're not talking like unknowns here. These are very successful authors. It's set at college or university, which I really love. I love YA set at university. I don't buy into the argument that once you get to university, it's adult. Uh-uh, no. You're gonna look at me and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? Am I wrong? No, 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 no. As someone who's experienced university, I did not feel like an adult. <laughs> Especially when you're just like starting uni. Like, you, you still feel the same person you did when you were 16. I don't, I don't think you're that different. So I don't buy into that argument. I want more YA written with characters at uni. So we're following two characters, one who is just starting and one who has been within this sorority for years. She, I think she's like, oh, American uni uh, has four years, right? So I think she's third year. It's essentially a sorority of witches. The sorority protects these witches so they can learn their magic together and become stronger together. And the one who's entering doesn't have any idea whether she's a witch or not, has no idea of this. And the other one is like deeply within the sorority. I'm really enjoying both of their perspectives. There's kind of a bit of <laughs> like, unwanted for both parties rivalry between the older one's boyfriend. Like they're both kind of like, the younger one's like unintentionally kind of getting involved with him and she like doesn't want that. But she's like, it's just, listen, it's just happening. <laughs> but I'm loving the kind of sisterhood element of this. I think that's really fun. I fucking love reading about witches. We're discovering this. I like witches. I never knew this about myself until this year, but like, I really like witchy books. I read The Year of the Witching, Once and Future Witches, this, I can't think of any other ones, but like, I love that. I love spooky gals. Um, that was weird. I said that word. Spooky gals. <laughs> I also just think it's written really well. I can't really tell a difference in writing between the two perspectives. I assume they each wrote one of them. And to me, it seems very, very cohesive between the two. And I just think it's written so well. The plot is moving along really well. Our characters are really unique. They both have interesting family dynamics. They both have interesting friendship dynamics. The whole kind of culture of sorority and these girls supporting one another, but also the elder ones testing out the younger ones, you know, to see if they are up to scratch. I just think it's really interesting. I'm listening to the audiobook and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm having a great time. I was not expecting this from this book, but I'm glad that this video has finally gotten me to read it because I don't think I've read it for ages otherwise. Okay, I haven't read any more of The Ravens yet, but I'm popping out because Waterstones are doing 50% off all hardbacks. Every single hardback. Every single hardback they're doing 50% off. So listen, I don't need more books. I just got loads for Christmas and I'm going to get loads for my birthday, but I want to like go over a look and I think I'll, mm, I'm going to aim for like three books. Three? I feel like that's <laughs> not too much. Sure, Jan. So that's what I'm going to aim for. I'm going to go out and have a look. I don't know if like the shelves will be depleted. I might get some more Penguin Cosband classics. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my god. Okay, let's go see what they have. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. Okay, so Waterstones mini haul quickly. I didn't spend too long in there. A, it was so busy. <laughs> it was so busy. So I didn't film a lot. Anytime, oh my God, it was so embarrassing. Anytime I was trying to get B-roll for you guys, like I'd finished filming and then someone who had obviously been waiting to like look at a book or get a book, like ducked in and was like, sorry. And I was like, ah. And also my local Waterstones, 
piss poor. <laughs> I'm sorry. The demographic that they're catering for, not me. Not me. Their YA section, shit. Their like thriller and crime section, shit. So I didn't have a lot of options open to me. So I I didn't get a lot. I didn't get, say, if I had gone into my favourite place ever, the Leeds Waterstones, which I miss dearly, the only thing I miss about Leeds, I think I would have come out with a very different selection of books. But hey-ho, I got books I am excited about. So I got two of the Penguin Cloth Band classics. I'm slowly kind of collecting them. So I picked up two that I really want to read. I picked up Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Jane Eyre is one of the classics I've probably always wanted to read the most. Mara from Books Like Woe loves it. And I love her. I've always just been very intrigued by the plot of Jane Eyre. There's a lot of like Jane Eyre retellings I want to read so I feel like I would appreciate them more if I read this. Then I'm collecting all of my Jane Austen books in these editions. I don't know, these are the vintage classic editions which I love but they don't have this book in it so that's why I got it in the Cothband Classic and I love this edition. It's so pretty! Look at it, it's yellow! This is Sandi Sanditon. You sound rather stupid to me, you know. You know, you're sort of person. If you had a brain, you'd be dangerous, dear. Sanditon by Jane Austen. So this, Sanditon was the book that she started writing and never finished. It was the last book that she was writing. This also has Lady Susan and the Watsons in it, which I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know much about what they are. I really want to read the introduction at the start of the book, but it says new readers are advised that this introduction makes details of the plots explicit. So I can't read that. <laughs> I want to read more about what these things are they're in this book before I read the book but like the introductions like spoilers so what am I supposed to do if anyone has this copy tell me like how bad it does it spoil it because I want to learn about the context surrounding it anyway then quickly I've been speaking too long I got Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doer this is the author of All the Light We Cannot See which is one of my favorite historical fictions ever I cried I this is one of the only but that was one of the only books I stayed up so late to read like I was I was staying up to like 2 a.m to read that book I'd had my eye on this for a while but it was quite expensive but obviously it was half price and water so it's half price so so um, not three pound off, it was half price. So that's why I picked it up. I actually don't know what this is about. Oh yeah, it's about the siege of Constantinople in 1453. So I'm very intrigued because I think a lot of the historical fiction I read is like Victorian, Edwardian, that kind of era. So I'm excited to read something different. And I also bowed to Prayer of Pressure and I got The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. <laughs> This is 20 pounds, like this is what it retails for. I would never, can you imagine? I would never pick that up for 20 pounds. However, for 10, I will, I will pick it up. Obviously this has been like one of the kind of really popular books that has had a resurgence and everyone seems to love it. I own Circe, haven't read it. And I told myself I wasn't gonna buy this until I'd read Circe, but like I did it cause it was half price. So that is my little mini Waterstones haul. I think it's a pretty good one. Let's talk about the Ravens now. So I finished the Ravens finally. It took me a little bit longer than I expected to read it but I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it four stars. I think the sisterhood in this is amazing. I think it reads so fast paced. You know it's kind of got these magical elements. It's got like a thriller esque mystery subplot which I love when books have this kind of tension that's going on between it. Do I think that this is doing anything that hasn't been done before? No, I don't. I, I think it's like a pretty standard YA fantasy, but I think it's well done. I love witches, apparently. Witches? Oh my god. Like, apparently I love witches. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. I can't remember any time I've read a soror sorority book. I, I really struggle to say that word. Soror soror sorority. <laughs> My mouth does not want to bend around that word. I can't remember I read a book set in a sorority that I actually really enjoyed. Sometimes I find them a bit cliche and like a bit like, Ugh. but I found the sisterhood that these characters had really lovely. But as a group, I would say it's such a big group. It's such a big cast of characters. Sometimes you like don't know who these people are. So that is a weakness of it. Like Vivi and Scarlet, the two perspectives we read from are the important ones. And I really loved them. I really loved the arc that they went on throughout the book, particularly Scarlet. I thought her character development and the story that she went on was so, so brilliant. I will say there was quite a lot of repetition in this. You know, when you, <laughs> you start a book, the next book in a series, <laughs> I'll have to subtly remind 
remind you of what happened in the previous book. It's like never very well done. Like they're trying to remind you what happened and like you need to know it otherwise you forget little things. But like it's always a bit like shoved in. They would do that every time we went back to a perspective. Like Vivi would keep talking about how she'd never had friends before and never had a sisterhood like this before. Like every time we went back to her and I'm like girl we get it. We get it. You don't need to keep repeating it. So I don't know if that's maybe something to do with having two writers, if that's something that kind of gets lost in translation, but I felt like whenever we went back to a perspective, it was like reminding us of like what they were thinking and feeling when we last were with them. I'm like, I was literally just with you like 15 pages ago. It's not that deep. But I just really loved the way that the story progressed. And oh my God, you guys, I, I kept thinking I had it and I didn't. See, I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind. Like, I kept thinking I knew where the story was going, what was happening, and kind of that, like, thrilly plot, subplot that was going on towards the second half of the book. I kept thinking I fucking had it, and I did not. And, like, it kept surprising me. I kept thinking, oh, I know what's going on. And then being like, like what? I think it's a really solid YA fantasy. I felt a bit disillusioned with YA fantasy towards the latter half of this year. I felt like it's not quite for me, but I really enjoyed the, the age that these characters were, but how, you know, it's a very suitable YA book, but the characters are a little bit older. I felt like that worked really well. So I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it and I'd recommend it. However, it is a duology and I will pick up the second book, but it kind of ends in a way that I'd be happy if this was a standalone. Like, I don't feel a great urge to read the second book because I I like where our characters ended up and how the stories ended up. I feel like it almost doesn't need it. It has been clearly set up for a sequel, so I'm not saying it's not been set up for that. Like, there's obviously routes we can go down in the sequel, but I've never really felt like this about a book before where I'm like, although I really enjoyed you, I could quite happily leave you as a standalone. Do you know what I mean? I would really recommend it. I really enjoyed it. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I kind of went into it with no, like, very low expectations, and I was pleasantly surprised. So now, I'm gonna quickly read Saga Volume 1. I have not read, I don't think like, this is like a comic book. Like it's not like a graphic novel, it's like a, what's the word, comic, comic, volume, whatever. All I know, it's about this young family in this fantastical world. I don't really know much more than that, but I'm just gonna go ahead, go ahead and read the whole thing and then tell you what I think of it. I have not read anything like this before, but I'm very intrigued, I'm very intrigued. So let's go read this quickly. I don't think this will take me much longer than like half an hour. just finished Saga Volume 1 and I really enjoyed it. I actually, I don't know what I was expecting from this. I think it's pretty similar to what I was expecting, like funny, humorous sci-fi, but I really enjoyed the humour in this. I really enjoyed the art style. I really, really enjoyed the kind of like found, not found family, like they're an actual family. <laughs> dum dum. <laughs> the family dynamics in this of you know, these two young lovers, like, just trying to protect their baby that they've lit they literally have, like, on the first page. Like, she gives birth on the first page. And then the, the rest is them just trying to survive and look after their kid. And I think it's just, like, a really imaginative, fun, vivid fantasy world. It's hard to have a lot to say about it because <laughs> it's, like, just a short graphic novel. But I really enjoyed, like, a lot of the kind of world building in this. I think I wasn't expecting it to have as many like little elements of world building that it had. Like I think that makes it feel so vivid is when there's so many different elements to the world and you feel like you've only just scratched the surface. I love the art style and that is by Fiona Staples. The family is kind of caught in the middle of this intergalactic war and there's a lot of people that want them dead and they're kind of just surviving against all odds. And I don't know, I just really loved their dynamic. I really loved the characters. I think I am gonna continue on with this. And at first I kind of thought it might be something that I enjoy, 
but don't pursue, like don't carry on with. But I feel like this would be a really fun thing to read, like not to vlog, but to just kind of enjoy reading once in a while. So I think I do want to continue on. I really enjoyed the dynamics of this. I'm going to give it four stars. It wasn't like a five star. I very rarely give graphic novels five stars or comics if they're not cute. <laughs> In order to get five stars, you have to be cute and wholesome. Whereas stuff like this I enjoy, but it's like a four star, you get me? But now we're gonna start what I think a lot of you have been waiting for, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. The thing is, The Ravens was four stars, then this is four stars. And if you had to ask me my prediction for going into this, I would predict this would be four stars. Like I think it's been widely loved. I think it's gonna be very good in terms of writing quality, but I don't think it's gonna be like an all time favorite for me. I can't really see it being that. So I kind of, I don't like that in vlogs when like I read three things and they're all the same rating. I like to have a little bit of light and shade, a little variation in what we're feeling. But I've had so many four stars in December. Like I think I've only had one five star and the rest of a win four stars, like predominantly I've had a few like lower ratings, but almost all four stars where they're books I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed the reading experience, but nothing has set my world alight. And if this could set my world alight, that would be great. But I almost, I don't see it. But anyway, I'm gonna probably read the first half of this and then check in with you on my thoughts. But yeah, not 100% sure what short to expect, but I feel like it's just gonna be another four star. Okay, many hours later, hi. <laughs> Listen, me and this book, we're going on a journey. Don't be alarmed, you don't need to be alarmed, but we're going on a journey. <sighs> Petrified. <laughs> Petrified. So the first 50 pages of this, I was obsessed. I was like, this is so good. Like we're meeting all these characters. We're meeting Juliet and Roma who we know, you know, they have a little bit of a past. And the two like opposing gangs that they represent, they're from two big families. And they each represent a different one of them. They're both heirs to the throne of the gangs. Um, <laughs> I thought it was so well written. This is very clever. It's very mature YA, which we'll get into. I have a few points. And I really love Juliet's character. She's a very headstrong person. Roma is more like quiet, like a quiet power that I also find very interesting. So I'm really enjoying the characters. I think the world building is great. This immediately reminded me of Jade City by Fonda Lee because that is about like multiple like mafia run families and we're following kind of the heirs who are about to take over the families um, and kind of turf wars and stuff. And so I think they're very, very similar. So I would recommend if you've read either of these and enjoyed them, like read the other one. Maybe you'll typically read YA and you wanna try adult fantasy for the first time and you really love like all the political maneuverings and the meetings between people and having to be like sly and get one up on each other. From this, I would recommend Jade City because they're very, very similar to me. Okay, let's talk about some things. <laughs> Call me a bad server because I always spill the tea. This is something I've been thinking about a lot. I've been watching a lot of people talk about it, about YA that is trying to target adult audiences, right? Trying to target audience, I guess, like myself. I mean, am I an adult? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel like it. But anyway, trying to tug adults who still read YA and who have read it since they were teens but have aged out of it versus actually trying to target young people. Now, the point is kind of mute. Mute? Not mute. Mute. Because this has been so successful, right? This has been so, so successful within young people. On TikTok, it's been so successful. But I question what proportion is teenagers and what proportion is adults. I don't know. Sometimes I'm reading this and I'm like, this is old like this is like this does not read like YA to me it reads like new adult and I feel like it is a fault I guess of the publishing world that new adult doesn't exist now <laughs> publishers and naysayers would like say that the success of this disputes my claims but I just think we could see more stuff of this level, of this nature, if that kind of space existed within publishing. And I think the success of this only shows the need for that because it just reads so old to me, you know? Like, and that's not a bad thing. Like I've been complaining sometimes when I read YA and I'm like, oh, I read so young. Like there's no one can win, but this isn't YA to me. This is not YA. I'm also, you know, I mentioned I love the first 50 pages. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's waning a bit. I don't feel like the pacing in this is the best. Like I'm a bit bored. Like not a lot has happened. Not a lot is happening. I feel like we could have cut this down a bit. It's quite long. It's about 440 pages. It doesn't need to be that long. It could be about 350, I think. We could have cut some stuff out because the pacing doesn't feel quite right. I'm not attached to many of the side characters. I enjoy them when we're when we're reading about them, but I am I'm struggling to remember who all these different people are and all the different families. I really like, is it Kathleen? Juliet's cousin? Yeah, Kathleen, and I really like Benedict, um, who's Roma's, I don't know what relation. <laughs> See, that's the kind of thing. I wish this had a family tree or something in it because I'm getting a bit confused on that level. So we have pros and cons. People who really wanted me to love this, don't panic. It's like, it's sitting at a 3.5 to four. Something in that ballpark for me right now. I've got reading sprints right now of my patrons. So hopefully that will mean that we can speed through it and get through it. And I will check in with you in the morning on my, on my final thoughts. But it's good, but like I'm not obsessed. I'm not obsessed. Okay, so guys, I didn't love it. This is totally unacceptable. I'm on my way. I didn't love it. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna give it three stars. Um, <laughs> for me, the biggest problem with this was the plot, right? I was doing so many reviews when I wasn't feeling it and all, all the reviews were like the ending. The ending is amazing. The ending is brilliant. And I, I read the ending and I was like, it just didn't work for me. <laughs> Firstly, let's say the writing, gorgeous, beautiful. The fact that Chloe Gong wrote this as a university student, I could never. Well, I, I can never because I've done, I've been to uni and I didn't do that. It's pathetic. You are pathetic. It's amazing, right? She's an amazing writer. She has beautiful prose. Her way with language is gorgeous. And that's usually the most important thing for me. But the plot, <laughs> like it was just, I was bored. I was so bored. It felt like we were kind of going in circles throughout the plot. Like the beats would be the same. We'd be doing the same things. It didn't feel like enough variety. It felt like Chloe Gong is a gorgeous writer, but struggled with the plot. And like, listen, I know I'm a hypocrite, right? The Star of Sea probably doesn't have a lot of plot in it. <laughs> but this book, it wasn't that it didn't have a lot of plot. It, it felt like it was trying to be this really fast paced YA fantasy with so much going on, but it just didn't pull it off. I just wasn't interested. That really let it down for me. Also going into this, because it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling, I thought it would be them like falling in love, but they fell in love four years ago and this is them like coming back together, which did not work for me because <laughs> you barely had any, you had no flashbacks, barely any, any information about what they were like together four years ago, apart from the fact that they played cards at the dock or some shit, like, I don't know. So it just didn't work for me because like, I am not attached to this relationship at all. You're not giving me flashbacks. You're not like falling in love now. I would have much preferred it if it was them having this kind of forbidden romance for the first time, but it wasn't. I didn't understand that decision. So it just felt like insta-lovey. Like it, it, I didn't see them as a romance, right? I never rooted for them as a romance. I liked them as rivals who were forced to work together to kind of save the town. I don't, I don't know. Actually, I've realized I haven't said this. There's like, there's like this plague going on where there's, like, there's these bugs that like are causing people to like tear at their own throats essentially. And they have to kind of work together to try and, and like try and fix this situation. But yeah, I like them as rivals having to work together, but not as a romance. Like that just didn't work for me. I will say the themes in this are great. You know, it does focus a lot on like um, colonialism and like white people trying to overtake certain cultures and trying to infiltrate them and kind of your sense of self when you are not no longer living 
at your original country, you kind of the sense of self when you enter like a Western society and trying to retain your sense of identity. Those are all really, really interesting themes and I thought they were done brilliantly. The themes and the writing, great. The plot and the romance, not so great, in my opinion. How do you know what's good for me? That's my opinion! Yeah, I am sad. <laughs> this is the last book I'm reading in 2021 and it wasn't great. I don't think I'm gonna continue on with the series. I'm not gonna continue on because I don't think it would be fair. I don't think I would like it. I know I said I was going to, but I just, as I thought more about it, I was like, A, I don't need more series to read. <laughs> and be you know I don't want to read it and like rate it low and then everyone else is loving it and, it and it be a bit unfair so I think I'm just gonna leave it at this I'm not gonna continue on bit of a sad note to end the video on but at least we had a bit of variety <laughs> so yeah I really enjoyed this video I really enjoyed figuring out what people were hauling last Christmas if you like the video please make sure you leave a like down below I know it's been very long so thank you for getting to this point point. Um, and if you've gotten to the end comment a rose emoji for the flowers on these violent delights comment that down below if you got into the end. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!